In the world of social media, there have been tons of rivalries between major platforms. The war between Facebook and Snapchat is one of them. But quick question, which app do you think is bigger right now between Facebook and Snapchat? We all know the answer to that. And if it's not so obvious to you, it's Facebook. But Snapchat may have had a chance in the beginning. After all, within three years of launching, they already had millions of users. So what went wrong? How did Facebook kill Snapchat? To understand this better, we have to go back to the time that Snapchat turned down a huge offer from Facebook. Turning down the $3 billion offer Back in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook, and today, this app has more than a billion users around the world, with more signing up every day. Facebook has a history of targeting startups and buying them. More specifically, Mark Zuckerberg looks at social media companies that he believes have huge potential and makes them offers that they just can't resist. Or so he thought. Well, Snapchat wasn't one of them. Now, there is Snapchat that was created by Evan Spiegel in 2011, with a lot of potential to become a world-leading platform within a few years. Any other tiny startup, which was just three years old at the time, would have jumped on the offer. But Snapchat decided that they didn't want to be bought for $3 billion. We already know how Facebook bought Instagram in 2012 for a billion dollars, and then latched onto WhatsApp for $21 billion. These were successful purchases to grow the Facebook empire, but Snapchat didn't want to be part of this. Before going over to Snapchat with an offer, Facebook tried the copycat method. They started with Poke, which Facebook launched in 2012. You could say that the company shamelessly copied everything that made Snapchat Snapchat and then transferred it to their app. Poke. Do you use Poke? We're guessing the answer is no. And that's how you know it was a complete failure and waste of millions of dollars. So, in what many people would refer to as one of the worst business decisions ever, Snapchat indirectly started an internet war with Facebook. After rejecting this offer, Facebook went to work on trying to bring Snapchat down as much as possible. This led to launching several apps, most of which failed. First, they created an app called Slingshot in 2014. We're guessing you don't use this app either. Although it had the same concept as both Poke and Snapchat, there was one slight difference. You could only see a picture after you sent one. As you can imagine, this was not practical and super complicated. Another failure, another million dollars down the drain, but Facebook wasn't done yet. This time, still in the same year, they created an app that allows users to send items that destroy within a specific time. Just like disappearing messages or pictures that was quite popular on several social media platforms today, including Telegram. They called this one Bolt, which copied Snapchat but wasn't good enough to complete. At this point, Facebook finally learned that creating an app that looks and acts like Snapchat wasn't going to work. The plan was to go all out and steal pieces of Snapchat for their products. What Facebook Stole from Snapchat After several failed attempts to get people to move away from Snapchat, Facebook learned that it wasn't that easy to convince millions of users to switch from one app to another. Sure, we've had several companies that became huge after they were bought by influential companies. We have YouTube, where you're at right now, and its rise to the top was greatly influenced by Google. At first, it was just a small site for sharing personal videos, but today it's a major hub of information and entertainment. This was what Facebook wanted with Snapchat, but since they couldn't get that, trying to replicate the app was a wrong move. So Mark Zuckerberg had a better idea. Why not take all those little pieces that make Snapchat awesome? and include them in Facebook products. In 2015, they started with the disappearing messages. Many people were in love with this feature from Snapchat, where you could send messages and they won't be there an hour later. Some activated them on purpose, while others didn't even know they had it on. The bottom line is, is that it was in use and Facebook snapped it up for a short while. People really didn't get into it for the Messenger platform because you could already do that in the Snapchat chat. It was way less stressful. Today, it's available on WhatsApp. So, what was next? Facebook bought Masquerade in 2016. At this time, Snapchat had already introduced their filters where you could make your face look like a dog and it became a viral trend. Almost everyone had pictures with the dog filters on their social media pages. But today, it's not that much of a thing. Still, the Masquerade app was majorly for augmented reality animations, which are the filters or effects that Snapchat became popular for. That app had us puking rainbows, but since this app, developed by Masquerade and Belarusian startup, existed alone, it didn't get very famous. Why would you want to download an entire app for filters when you could just swipe up your Snapchat 
and get it done immediately directly in the app. So Facebook moved on from this once again. Guess what was next? The messenger codes. They weren't hiding the fact that they were stealing features from Snapchat anymore. So Facebook grew bolder and bolder. We're all familiar with Snapchat snap codes where you could just send it to anyone and they could add it to their snap easily. Facebook got into this concept of QR codes and then did one more thing to their competitor. They decided to stop all users from having a snap code on their profile picture. It was supposed to be a smart way of stopping Snapchat from spreading. But then users got creative with several ways to stop the Facebook algorithm from detaching the snap code on their profile picture. Now, if you think it ends there, then you've not been paying attention. It's time to talk about the most outrageous update in social media history. And it's none other than the Instagram Stories. Instagram Stories and the End of Snapchat No doubt about it, Stories are the highlight of the Snapchat app. When you log into your Snapchat, what do you do? Typically, you would take a few filter-rich pictures for your Snap, share these with your friends, and then check out the stories your friends have uploaded. Sometimes you may chat with a few of them, and that's all there is to it. But with Instagram having more than 800 million users right now, you already know who the bigger app is. A few years ago, Instagram wasn't this big, and the Instagram stories may have contributed to its growth. At the time, the app where people would upload both short videos and pictures quickly was starting to get famous with many people. Celebrities got on board quickly, and then they launched Instagram stories that could include text, pictures, and basically anything entertaining. This was the beginning of the end for Snapchat. They also added some new features that weren't a part of Snapchat, and the company responded by copying these features. All is fair in love and war, right? So it was Snapchat's turn to copy Facebook, but that was a little too late. We also have WhatsApp Stories right now, which is an active feature for millions of users. It's a major hit on WhatsApp, and now most people only use Snapchat for its filters. Well, Snapchat may have had a chance at a comeback if Kylie Jenner didn't tweet that she doesn't use the app anymore. With that, they lost about a billion dollars in revenue, and their stock prices dropped. Imagine having that much influence on a social media app. Snapchat introduced Snapchat Discover, which was meant to be a news hub in the league of major media organizations like CNN and National Geographic. But it's filled with clickbait videos and some not-so-funny pranks. And now, Snapchat is way behind when it comes to top social media platforms. Today, Facebook is the most valued social media platform in the world, with almost 3 billion users worldwide compared to just over 250 million users on Snapchat. We can see who the obvious winner of this battle is. Snapchat didn't want to be controlled by a big corporate company like Facebook, but do you think they could have been better off collecting that $3 billion offer? Now you know how Facebook killed Snapchat, and that's a wrap. Should Snapchat have accepted the offer from Facebook, and why do you think they're not popular anymore? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.